Hey everybody, good morning, welcome to, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, the final video in the Over the Wire Bandit series. Like everybody else, I have a limited amount of time that I can devote to side projects outside of my main profession. Uh, and for that reason, I'm limiting these videos to level 12 to 13, which is what you see here, because I have other videos that have been head and shoulders far more above and beyond more popular than the Over the Wire series. Now, if I'm wrong and there's a silent uh, base of fans out there that just love what I'm doing here, let me know in the comments below and I'll pick up on this again in the future. Now, with that said, just a reminder, my name is Chris Ray. I have this channel here, InfoSec for Humans, where I help you level up your cybersecurity career. You can follow me on Twitter. You can find my website where I have all my videos and some blogs, which is infosecforhumans.com. And also, don't forget, subscribe here for all my latest and greatest content. All right, so we're getting right into this one. And if you don't know yet, uh, level 12 to 13, we're dealing with a file that is in a hexa dump format, uh, which is what you see there. And I'm catting it out. I'm taking a look at it. And um, I know from reading the description that we need to work with the XXD command, which you can see here says, makes a hexa dump or does the reverse. Uh, XXD creates a hex dump of a given file or standard input. It can also convert a hex dump back to its original binary form. So that's the way we're going to use it in this tutorial here. Uh, let's see, scrolling down a little bit. Uh, there's the dash R for revert or reverse. And that is what we're going to use here. So knowing that, uh, again, I try to cat it out uh, and then I get halfway through it and I realize, wait a second, uh, I don't have read permissions on the current directory. I need to go back and create a temporary directory that I can work out of under temp TMP and I name it anything you want to name it. I name it my level 12. You could call it whatever, doesn't matter. So then I go back here, I'm going to cat this out, pipe it to XXD into that new directory I created and using that, uh, that arrow that you see there and that says send the output of this command into the file that I'm going to define after this. And there I forget again, I need to send it to temp my level 12, and then name it a file name, give it a file name. And then once I get this sorted out here, um, it was early, I was kind of tired, still waking up, getting my brain in gear. So then I do that, it executes without any errors, I change the directory into temp, my level 12, and here I list it out, I see I have data one. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna issue the file command, because remember, file tells us the file type we're working with. And I issue file, it says it's a gzip. So now at this point, I'm gonna move data one into data two, just for uh, ease of use, helping me keep track of the steps I'm taking here. And I'm gonna give it the .gz or gzip file name. So now file.data2.gz, and I'm kind of repeating myself. This, these, these are unnecessary steps. As I found out towards the end of the video, uh, at this point, I'm gonna use zcat to unzip data2.gz and I'm going to send the contents into data3. Again, I'm going to do file on data3. I can see here it's now a bzip compressed data format. So now I'm going to use bzcat. Well, first I'm going to move it again because, uh, you know, wasn't really sure if I needed to do that or not. I'm going to rename it. There we go. It's been renamed which as it turns out, you don't need to do that step. You can just go straight to bzcat data3. You don't need to have the uh, the dot .bz on the end of it. So now we are unzipping data data3.bz. We're sending it into data4. We're going to file again, see what file format we're working with. And now we see it's back in gzip. So that means it was compressed again using zcat. So now zcat data4 into data5. Helps if I use the right directional arrow. File again, data five. Now we're in a tar archive. If you remember tar archives, we have to use the tar command. And here's some fun facts for you. I left this in because uh, the order of options that you specify on a command, it does matter. And that's what I did wrong here. I used uh, tar dash, should be XVF, and I was specifying FXV. So you can see here, I, I go to try to fix it. I do XFV, it's still not right, and it's trying to tell me that, but I'm too slow, too thick in the head at that point in time. So I'm kind of scratching my head here. I'm like, oh, maybe I need to specify the local directory. That's not it either. Uh, I need to move that F to the end of the options chain there. I need to make it tar dash XVF to make it work right. 
So here I am again, still scratching my head a little bit. Like, am I working on the right file? Yes, I am. All right, go ahead. X V F. Come on, man, do it, do it. Yeah, there we go. Now it's gonna work. Go ahead, send it, commit it. There we go. Now we have a file called data5.bin. I'm gonna use the file command, data5.bin. What is it? It's still a tar archive. So we're gonna do it again, tar xvf on data5.bin. Now you can see here I have data6.bin. So we're gonna use file again, data6. What are we working with? It's in a bzip compressed archive. So again, I'm moving data6.bin and I'm renaming it to data6.bz. This is an unnecessary step. Uh, you don't need to do this. I should have been skipping it. All right, so now we're in data6.bz format with the file extension on there. You know, you can't tell that I come from a Windows background, can you? Uh, so bzcat data6.bz and again we're going to send this into data7 now we're going to file data7 and we're back into a tar archive so tar xvf that file data7 we're going to send that into Oh no, we get data eight. So again, we're gonna file data eight. What do we got? It's a gzip, all right. We gotta be getting close to the end of this chain. How many times can they compress in different formats? Uh, so again, looks like, no, there you go. I finally figured it out. I can just zcat data eight dot bin. And you have your password for the next level. There you have it, everybody. Uh, I hope you found this useful. As always, I, I made these over the wire series videos, uh, not to show you how to beat the CTF, but to demonstrate in a practical manner how you can use different Linux commands to uh, overcome a problem. If you like what I'm doing here, if you like these videos, you like the over the wire series, let me know in the comments below, like and subscribe to this channel here. And again, my name is Chris Ray. I have this channel here. It's called InfoSec for Humans, where I help you level up your, your cyber security game.